Enter the Stars. And what you're about to see next is has to be one of the creepiest telescopes in the world. Let me pull this up. We're going to be in Google Earth for part of this morning before we get into some of the things surrounding this very creepy telescope. This telescope just also happens to be the largest telescope in the world. And it goes by many names. One of those names is FAST, which stands for 500 meter aperture spherical telescope. Now, these are some of the early images of the telescope. This is in China. And as you can see, there's this bizarre road that spirals down into the depths of the pit of this telescope. And you can actually see it still after they installed these panels. You see, it almost forms a rudimentary uh, pentagram as well. Now, this particular telescope also goes by the name Tianyan, which means Eye of the Sky slash Heaven. And as you can see in these early construction photographs, it in fact looks like the spiral storm at the South Pole of Saturn. Now, was this a mistake? I don't think so. And I'm going to show that to you. This is a spiral portal. And today's show will be about the 500 meter aperture spherical telescope, the largest telescope in the world. Here are some more images of it. As you can see here upon its completion, the eye of the sky. Now, we know that spirals are gates or portals. We've done a lot of work on these gates and portals as spirals. We've shown you how these column basalt packed hexagonal um, tree stumps all across the earth seem to come out of the ground as spirals. The most important one is the one, the Devil's Tower in Wyoming, of course. And it seems to emerge out of the ground as a spiral. And I believe be that's because they were once gates. Now, we also know, let's make sure we're connected here before we go on with the show. We are. We also know that um, the Bible refers to the eye as the window to the, so of, to the soul. We know that spirals are gates or portals. We know that the eyes are also gates and portals as well. Now, many of you will remember the work that we did in the early days of Enter the Stars. And we had discovered that the, the eye is very synonymous with the womb. Here's the, the womb, the child inside, and I superimposed the eye over it. Well, you can't just do that unless there's other things that compare to the womb and the eye, right? Well, here are the cross comparisons. You have a placenta in the womb and a retina in the eye, both visually very similar, serving much of the same purpose to provide blood flow. You have an umbilical cord in the womb, which is a lot like the hyoid canal, which is this artery that runs from the lens of the eye all the way to the, the blood supply and actually develops the lens of your eye when the child is in the womb. Curiously, we have a cervix that in the womb that is a lot like the iris that opens and closes. Also, the Bible talks about the womb as the fruit of the womb mentioned many times in the Bible. And when you look at the cells lining the interior anatomy of the eye, it also looks like fruit. We have 40 weeks of total gestation, which is the time that the child is in the womb. And at 40 millimeters 
of the size of the fetus in utero, the hyaloid canal, the hyaloid artery withers away and dies, leaving the hyaloid canal in its place. And in the last but not least, the child sits in the womb inverted upside down and the image, the light that comes in through your iris is upside down. So those are all of the similarities between the eye and the womb, which is a gate, a portal. Well, what do you mean, Casey? Well, it's a portal into this world. You're born into this into sin through a portal. And this umbilical cord actually twists into a spiral as well. And the womb, the musculature of your actual womb is spherical or spiral. So when the child is born, the muscles push out in a spiral motion. And if you've ever looked at images of childbirth, you'll see the twisting motion of the child as they exit the birth canal. So I'm not making all this up. Now, what else is there? Well, the womb is the portal into the matrix. And the Bible actually calls the womb the matrix. Now, many people, uh, because of the Mandela effect and all these things, you got to be careful with that. Because they're saying, oh, Matrix was never in the Bible before. The fact of the matter is that it's in there now. It doesn't really matter if it was in there before or your beliefs on that. The Matrix is the hex. It's the six-sided prison that we're in. The hexagon. That's why there's a hexagon at the North Pole of Saturn. We're all born into sin, according to the Bible. And here's where things get interesting because the womb eye, womb eye, is also the shape of the universe. And I call that the optiverse. Now we put together this model here. Many of you will remember this. We took the eye anatomy. We showed the light coming in. We showed it how this there is actually the same exact degree that we are told that the earth is tilted at. And I'll leave that up to you to decide what all that means. But we're told it's tilted at 23 degrees, right? Well, the hyaloid canal is tilted at 23 degrees. And then here you have the what's called chromatic aberration, which is appears just as you see it here in the internal anatomy of the eye. Some people have it, and it's because of anomalies in the lens of your eye. It causes what is called a chromatic aberration. It looks like a rainbow. Everything you see looks like a rainbow halo around it. Well, that's the rainbow. And then all the stars are fixed around here in the firmament, as the Bible says. They're fixed, but something is making them turn. Something is making them turn. And here, I believe, the sun and the moon sit inside the firmament. Here's the earth down here. And everything else you see in the sky is floating around here. And that's why you have floaters at the center of the vitreous humor of your eye. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. There's plenty of videos on this. But I needed to review it because it relates directly into this creepy telescope. So can you see now how these truths are nested within one another? We have an eye with a womb within the world. The world within the womb within the eye. Within the child. And just like pregnancy, a mother and the child is a nested truth. The child is inside the mother. And everything in our universe, in our world, exists this way. It's called a nested truth. And you can extrapolate things out based on these truths. And this is where we came up with these concepts of what the universe might look like. Now, let's go back into Google Earth. Because here's where things get kind of creepy. Because there is this town... And it's called Ping Tang Astronomy Town. And it is only six kilometers away. Let's zoom out a little bit. 
and it's a Disneyland like astronomy attraction. Now they they say they didn't anticipate for this thing to blow up, but you're gonna see this very bizarre town now. This location was difficult to find because for some reason Google Earth has not updated their images here. And so what I had to do was superimpose this astronomy town over the top of this area because I finally located it based on matching it up with this river. Here it is, six kilometers away. This is called Ping Tang Astronomy Town. And we're going to look at some other photos of this after we get out of Google Earth. But I wanted to show this to you and see how I matched up the rivers. This is it. And here's the aerial photo that I found on Google, uh, that online, and I superimposed it into Google Earth. And what you're going to notice here is a five-pointed Baphomet. Look at this. Let's zoom in on this. Here you have the five-pointed Baphomet. One, two, three. Four, five, and you also see the owl eyes of Molech. Now, let's go back in here, and I want to show you some better images of this. Let's close these up. So you guys can understand what's going on here. This is the highest resolution that I could find of the image. And you see the owl, owl eyes of Molech coming up, spinning around, and turning back in on itself. Now, this concept is also related to the Taurus field or a magnetic field. It's much like the shape that you would get if you took an apple and cut it down from top to bottom. Inside you would see a torus field. It's a the shape of the magnetic field, okay? Now, what are the owl eyes of Molech in the night sky? Let's visit that right now. This is fascinating. The glory of heaven seems to be muted. Let's turn this on. Got to turn on uh, run flash this time. Hello. Okay. The glory of heaven seems to be muted behind the sin of Molech. What does that mean, Casey? Well, let's let this play. This is the night sky at the equator. Ecuador, to be exact. They did a time lapse as well as panoramic. So, a star that you see in the sky obviously over time is going to move. And it moves in a circular pattern. And at the equator, you can see both pole stars. Now, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna debate about where the other pole star is. And I'm starting to wonder if that other pole star that we're told is at a south pole isn't just a reflection of the north pole star. I don't know that. Okay. But if you look here, this seems to form two owl eyes. And I believe that the glory, the true glory of heaven, is hidden behind them. And that's why the Milky Way, let's pause this, is called the Milky Way. Milk is Molech. Now here are some images so you can wrap your brain around what you're actually looking at here. The panoramic shows this. These are the owl eyes of Molech. 
hiding the glory of God. Think about it. As time passes, the stars reveal Molech. Molech is time. Death. Kronos. The thing that makes us grow old and die. We're trapped behind time. Now, the Milky Way is MLK, Molech. Milk is sacrifice. Now, how do I know? What are the clues that we have that the true glory of heaven is muted? Well, one clue is that people that have cataracts, some of them have elected to have their lens removed. Cataract is the clouding of the lens of your eye, right? And some people have opted to remove their lenses. Well, when that happens, you can't really focus on things, right? Well, when they remove their lenses, something very amazing happens. They can see the true glory of heaven or more of it than we do. And as they try to describe the brilliance of what is coming in through their eyes, they can't even describe it. Remember the Bible says that scales fell from Saul's eyes? Well, there are actually scales inside the lens of your eye. When you cut it in a cross section, there is a tightly packed hexagonal matrix. And when you remove those scales, maybe this is what Saul saw. He saw past the owl eyes of Molech. Now these are facts. It's up to you to decide what they all mean. Now, I also believe there's an aerial component that is also helping to block the true glory of heaven, something above our heads, not just inside the lens of your eye. But regardless, the evil ones worship this dark star spin of the owl eyes of Molech. The Bible says that he shall seek to elevate himself above the Most High. So when we look up in the sky, what do we see? Molech. Now, going back to the eye, earth, womb model. This is fascinating. We can see the vitreous humor fluid that's inside the eye. It actually spins in the same fashion as the Moloch star spin in the night sky. Wrap your brain around that for a second. If the earth was here, sitting atop the inner lens of the eye, and the vitreous humor is spinning just like the owl eyes of Molech in the night sky, we have ourselves a very definitive clue, don't we? That, that all of this is actually happening above our heads. Now, I'm not so sure about what is causing the spin. Remember, God's force was above the waters during the creation of earth is what it says it hovered above the waters is this god's force causing the spin or is it sin causing the spin i don't know and it really doesn't matter all that matters is we're trapped in the matrix we're trapped here we have to get out there's only one way the narrow gate rebirth back through the umbilical back to heaven within I mean th this is unbelievable now let's keep going with this because there's a whole lot more there's something even more peculiar about this site and you can see I've drawn some lines here why because we're back to this ping tang town, I want to call it. Uh, this Disneyland place next to this spherical telescope. And as you can see here, let's zoom this out a little bit. Here's our Molech, right? And many of you noticed, in, even in the thumbnail, there's the smiley face. You've got a smile here. And you've got the two eyes here, or two eyes here. Then you've got a, 
you've got a, a smiley face here too. You got two eyes here and a smiley face. This is all the smile now, cry later, which is the shape of the eclipse path as it crosses the earth. They usually look like a smiley face or a sad face. And these eclipses mark the beginning and end of things for the sun worshippers. They do everything according to these eclipses because they worship the sun. Now, what are these lines? Well, this line right here is the general direction and alignment of the Molec image here. So, what I did is I measured it, and this is interesting because as if you look on your screen, you'll notice that this telescope sits at 106 degrees um, in its lon lat a longitude. Okay, that's the position of it, 106 degrees. Well, look at this. It's also this Molec is also lined to 106 degrees from the center eye through the center part of the monument or whatever you want to call this. So we have a 106 degree alignment and we have a 106 degree longitude. What's 106 and 106? That's 212. I don't know the significance of that, but this is interesting nonetheless and it's noteworthy. Now what is this other line here that I have here? Well, let me let me go back into here I want to show this to you I start to close some of these windows up okay so this is a better image of it here this eye right here I believe is an all-seeing eye this is they want your eye full of darkness instead of full of light Jesus is the eye is the lamp of the body and if your eye is single your whole body will be full of light your eye is dark, your whole body will be full of darkness. It is written in the Bible. Now, let's look at this other alignment. Let's go through these here. I have to show you this one image that helps to put all this in perspective for you. Because it's kind of hard to see in that fuzzy image there. But there's this thing, and it looks like a torch. It almost looks like the torch on the Statue of Liberty, to be honest with you. Which is kind of weird. But this torch sits on the other side of this town, this astronomy town. And it forms an alignment. There's a night picture of it. With the telescope there with the spiral in it. Still very prominent. Let's get over to some of these other images. Another night image there. That looks like the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, doesn't it? One of the... Some of the entertainment at this astronomy town. Very occultic place. What you guys need to understand is all of these countries work together. Look at this. This almost looks like profiles of children. On the ceiling here. This is what Molech requires. Okay. Milk. Alright. Getting close to where I wanted to show you guys here. Oh, well, maybe it's back here. Probably one of these. And I'll be in the chat in a bit. Oh, here it is. Look at this thing. This looks like the torch from the Statue of Liberty. Now, this torch sits across I want you to see the orientation of how this sits it sits across from Molech okay it's not even the image I wanted to show you okay this is it here you can see the torch here let's make this a little bit bigger you can see the torch here you can see the eye here. You see this L-shaped building. Now, if you were to draw a line from the center of this eye down here, it would nick 
this building, right, goes straight through this rectangular area, and it would align to the torch, right? So we have an alignment. Well, I went into Google Earth because I wanted to see what was up with this. Lo and behold, here's the eye. Here's the L-shaped building. Here's the mass, the rectangular mass of buildings. And this is where that torch would be sitting if it this image extended out. And when you measure this, guess how guess what the angle is on this? You're blown away. Guess what the angle is on this? 88 degrees. Now, we've seen this 88 degree alignment before, haven't we? The Capitol building in Washington, D.C. is aligned with the Washington Monument at 88 degrees, rotunda to obelisk. And at the Vatican, the rotunda to obelisk also aligns to 88 degrees. I think we were the first ones to discover that. There is continuity with their magic. All them in the elite rule the world together. They create a right-left paradigm, which is what I've been trying to tell you guys, to keep us divided. It's for our benefit in their eyes to keep us divided. Unbelievable. Now, if you look here, the Baphomet, what it looks like, is built in and right up against this very snake-like river, right? This is very serpentine. Looks very much like a snake, like the serpent. And now we're going to look closer at some of these images of the town that I pulled up. Now, a weird thing happened. Here's the, the torch. It's got a spiral on it, too. I'm going up around the base. Maybe a... Tower of Babel type of thing? I don't know. Very weird. I want to get a good close-up of this. You guys can see this. Very Tower of Babel-like, isn't it? Now we're also going to read some people's experience with the vis visiting this place. There's an observatory, I think, or a planetarium. Here you see spirals all around. There's a lot of Saturn symbolism. Here's another spiral here. Looks a lot like a gate, doesn't it? This is one of the lower quality images. Got a couple high quality images pulled up too. Spiral there. Largest telescope in the world. There's another spiral here. What's this? We already looked at this image. We've got a whole community built around this very occult place. You can almost see like a signal coming out of this eye, right? That must be like a radio signal. Look at this. Smile now, cry later. This almost looks like a dragon eye right here. This this ball thing here blows up a little bit. Of course, the owl eyes of Molech spinning around. There's the dark eyes here. Ooh, there's a 33 or a 44. 3 and 3 or 4 and 4. Okay, so that has significance, obviously. Creepy stuff. Now, many of these photos... This stuff is not widely um, available online. A lot of this stuff was from Chinese websites. And I had a weird experience. My computer slowed down to almost zero. And I was like, what's going on? Well, when I rebooted my computer and ran my software to take out anything bad on the computer, I went to pull these tabs back up because they're in the history. And it said that the, I was blocked. I got like a 403 notice. Almost like whoever... Knew I had these tabs pulled up, blocked me. This isn't the first time this has happened, of course. It's happened many times, as you guys know. But look at this. you got this snake-like buildings going back to the torch. 
Here's a really good image. At sunset or sunrise, I can't tell. But the snake-like river. And, whoa, this looks like if you saw it the other way, these two could be the eyes. That could be like the nose. And then down there, the river becomes like a mouth. Whoa. And of course, the buildings are in gold. Keep going with this. Very much looks like the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. These are the, the lights. There's a pyramid in all seeing eye there. Wow. See how it's got the disco globe there. This forms a pyramid. There's like a moon type of thing. We've got all these children performing here. Looks like on the stage. Uh, those might not be children. Those look like small adults. Wow. Let's keep going with this. Creepiest telescope in the world. Again, this was from a Chinese site. I, I'm almost positive this is at the little town. I can't confirm that. But if it is, look at some of the images underneath this as the people walk through this walkway. Screaming, crying people. Very cryptic. Here's a night image of it. Can almost make out a smiley face. There's an eye there. There's an eye there. There's like the nose and there's the smile. The night image of the spiral. I think it's a road actually. It descends down into the bottom center. I can only imagine these people probably go down here in the center of this thing at night and they collect all the world's energy. And look, it's even against the backdrop of the Molech star spin. Look at that. Time-lapse photography. This must be like headlights to a truck or a car that is driven down in the spiral over the lapse of time as the stars above are spiraling above. So you have an above and below occurring in this image. I'm not so sure if these things aren't collecting energy from people around the world. And there has nothing to do with looking at and looking for extraterrestrial life. Let's read some of these news stories I pulled up. It's one of the hottest new attractions in China, unless you count it by the tourists holding up cameras at the site. There are none. Cameras, cellular phones, and electronics are banned at the visitor platform of the 500 meter aperture spherical radio telescope. Nickname Tianyan or Eye of the Heaven. Because the, tel the telescope is designed to pick up radio and gravitational waves from deep space, it is incredibly sensitive to electromagnetic interference. Therefore, local authorities have strictly forbidden facilities and equipment that generate electromagnetic radiation waves within a 5 kilometer radius of the telescope's core area. Tourists are restricted to 2,000 per day. To protect the research. They've been arriving in droves since September 2016. When the telescope officially completed construction. 240,000 have visited the core area of FAST in the first year. After leaving behind all their electronics at the astronomy town. More than 5 kilometers away. The visitors are taken by bus on a steep winding road. And make way through a string of small villages. They also climb up 800 steps on a zigzag stairway along the mountainside to reach the observation platform overlooking the telescope. Then comes a breathtaking view of the giant silver dish of the world's largest telescope, spanning the area of 30 soccer fields. There are 4,450 triangular panels. So then they go into all this horseradish, which is how they believe they're going to find something, which... I believe these could either be um, th devices to try to break through the firmament. I mean, who knows what these things really are, right? Who knows what they really are? All we know, look at this, 33,000 jobs. So that matches up with the 33 we saw on the ground. 
Jeez, that's six pages. We're not reading all six pages of that. What else do we have here? Oh, this guy visited the place. Let's see what he has to say. All right. Get some more clues. I am Bushan Kasha from Nepal. PhD student. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. I was recently excited about visiting the fast station when I heard about the news of the opening ceremony on September 2016. So he arrived and he went to a hotel. Astronomical ambience with telescopes and paintings of the solar system in the lobby. The winter school started with the welcome speech from Gang Zhao. Okay. On the second day, during the breakfast at the hotel, he met junior high students from the observatory. Okay, a group of 23 students. Largest telescope in the world. I think there's more down here. And the most exciting part of the, the tour, the fast station. Radio silence, blah, blah, blah. Wanted to get into the town. Okay, here we go. In the evening, we went to see the light show at Ping Tang Astronomy Town. The whole city was glowing. There were street lamps throughout the town which looked like flying saucers and UFOs. There was music coming from a building which looked like a space station with a lightning system or lighting system designed as a tree in the middle. That's the one we just saw it looked like the tree of life. And they see, so they admit that it's designed as a tree. So it's not us making anything up. Okay? See how this works? There was a Milky Way section near the river. Milky Way. Remember Molek? With the big bulbs like Saturn and Jupiter. To be in such a nice astrono astronomical ambiance in the midst of the mountains nearby the lake gave us a feeling of extreme happiness. Oh yeah, because it's collecting waves from around the world probably. Bouncing off of the, uh, the firmament. It's it could be a collection device. Everything these people do is opposites. Imagine standing at the center of this thing. It's collecting something. The planetarium was in the middle of the astronomical town. We visited the next day. It was like visiting a museum. Introducing different aspects of astronomy. Like the description of the history of radio astronomy. Solar system. Evolution of the universe. From Big Bang. Black holes. More horseradish. More horseradish. It was the first time in my life I saw a movie in a golf-like disc-shaped oval screen with 3D effect. Wow. Ping Tang Astronomy Town. There's an image of it. Now, as we begin to wind down the show, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and pop them in the chat. I'm not going to be in there too long. What's this article about? We've been staring at the stars, wondering what's up for centuries. We've been using mirrors, prisms, telescopes. Wow. Comes in second, well, it says here, largest filled radio telescope in the world and the second largest single aperture telescope. Comes in second to the massive Ratan telescope located in Russia. Hmm. The FAST telescope is located in a natural sinkhole. Wow, a sinkhole. You know, a lot of people have surmised that sinkholes might even be portals, right? Remember all those movies about sinkholes? There's actually a movie called Holes, isn't it? And they're like portals. There's also, what is it, Montezuma's? There's this, like, a, like some weird place. Montezuma's something. I can't remember it off the top of my head. And uh, people have gone into this lake. It's a small lake. And they've, and they've dived into it. And at the bottom... Of this lake, Montezuma's Lake, there's this weird sand. It's not firm and it's not soft. And the divers have explained that there's this feeling of dysphoria and disorientation as they approach the bottom of this thing. It's very, very deep, by the way. And many people assume that this may be a portal to hell. So, 
a natural sinkhole. What better place to put a portal to hell than on top of a natural sinkhole? So here's some images of it during its construction. You can see the spiral there. Here's some more images of it. Astronomy Town. Look at this. The area in Ginzu province was originally home to more than 9,000 people. They were paid to relocate to create a 3.1 mile quiet zone around the facility. This isn't the first radio quiet zone in the world. The Green Bank Radio Telescope in West Virginia has a massive 13,000 square mile quiet zone surrounding it. Wow. We're going to have to look into the Green Bank Radio Telescope in West Virginia. See, there's something weird about that. It's not because they want people to be quiet. It's because they're doing weird stuff. So they just call it a quiet zone and move everybody out. Be cool to like sneak into one of these places. See what's really going on. So they go on to talk about Ping Tang Astronomy Town. There's some more images here. Wow. People are so asleep. Now, is all this happening? I don't know. It's just very bizarre. Never ever just accept what you're told as the truth. Most people lie. Especially people in power. So here's a bird's eye view. Serpentine walkways. And there's the alignment there too, as you can see. There's the 88 degree alignment. It was right through the center of this thing. Go to this next page here. Another image. Look at that. Some kind of like playground or something right there. China. This is China, you guys. Looks like Disneyland or something. Look how perfect everything looks. Go to the next page. There's a close up. Whoa. Pretty creepy. That's the Astronomical Museum. Eye of Heaven Town. It's on the side of these buildings. Look, just some like images of space, I guess they call it. The telescope. Almost reminds me of those ghost towns, right? Chinese ghost towns. Towns that they built that nobody lives in. What do they tell everybody to go inside to take the picture? These images are from 2017. Look at that weird sculpture. Lots of bridges. So you guys get a snapshot into what life is like in China. Now, tomorrow's show, we're just going to pull up my Facebook group, Enter the Stars, and uh, we're going to take a look at just posts that people have posted. A lot of good posts on the Facebook group, and uh, if you want to join the Facebook group, it's probably a great way to share information, um, but I know a lot of you have moved off of Facebook, so I don't just exclusively post stuff there. Uh, you're always going to be able to see everything that you can see on this YouTube channel and so don't worry don't feel like you're missing out on something if you can't get into the group because you don't have Facebook anymore but for those of you that are on Facebook we're gonna profile a lot of your posts tomorrow it's gonna be tomorrow's show look at this the completed dish has the spiral road underneath you could see the faint outline of this Wow. so what do you guys think is this what they say it is? Multi-million dollar project. Biggest telescope in the world. It's got a very 
pentagonal feel to it. Kind of aligns with the monument that they built in the town, doesn't it? Wired Magazine. Saturn. Lots of Saturn stuff. Here's some images of the town. Milky Way Galaxy. All right. I think that's about it. Go back here into the chat. All right. Let's take a look here. Thanks, everybody, for showing up to the show this morning. If you're new to the channel, we do a live show every, pretty much every single day during the week. Every once in a while, I'll take a day or, a day or two off here or there. But if I do, I'll usually, I'll usually pop up like a premiere. I'll usually edit together a video and put up a premiere for you guys of past videos that I've put all together in a montage that all have similar subject matter. Rather than having you look through endless playlists, I'll just put together... A, a full length premiere for you. But we're always here about the same time in the mornings, give or take 15, 20 minutes during the week. And on the weekends, we I don't really post as much. Give you guys a break because this is heavy information, you guys. A lot of information. So, um, all right. <laughs> Blazing birds as it looks like a giant walk, doesn't it? Right? Which, by the way, walks actually, uh, they're convection devices. So they take heat from a single source and it radiates it out into the pan. That's why walks are so efficient. They're shaped that way for a reason. It looks exactly like a giant walk. Wow. Sacto Mrs. Case. I miss you guys too. I miss California. You know, California has is just I don't know what happened, man. Didn't used to be like that. You know that. Salmon Creek. California used to be a great place to live. And then it just got really creepy and weird. So yeah. Miss the Central Valley. 916, the 209, the 805. Right. The plan of that building looks like the birth of some kind of demonic entity from the waters above and the river, the waters below. The curved line is a firmament with the head and the wings entering. Great observation, Jason. Looks like kind of like a fallen angel, yeah. I mean if we were able to ever able to see one. They're deleting accounts by October. Wow. Yeah, I get up early. I'm up at like 5, 5.30 every morning. Trying to put up a new moon satellite reflecting off the dome. You guys, their entire... Their entire goal is to get through the firmament. They can't. It's They're in a prison right now. If you believe the Bible, then you'll believe. There's a firmament up there. And you'll believe that the fallen angels are trapped here with us demonic entities and that they're trying to get out you'll believe that satan himself is down here with us trying to get out okay how do you think that satan was able to show jesus all of the kingdoms of the world at the top of a high mountain what was that high mountain well was he at the top of the firmament looking down onto the earth and how did he see all of the kingdoms of the world at one time well, that would have to be relatively flat. Because you can't see all the kingdoms of the world if the, well, some of them are on the other side of the earth, right? And that's all I'll say about that. There was a little bit of uh, drama surrounding the whole earth and the shape of it. I don't like to fight about that stuff, you guys. It's nothing to fight about. Because here's what's going to happen. You're playing right into the enemy's hands. You fight about that stuff and play sides, uh, you're div immediately dividing yourself on something that is very hard to prove tangibly, okay? Either way. And so I hate it. I absolutely hate it when I see people get angry about having a debate about someone 
whether about the shape of the earth. Okay, there's so many other things we can be focused on. I have my ideas and beliefs based on what I just showed you today. But I'm not going to shove that, that down somebody's throat and try to say, oh, if you don't believe this, you're a shill. Or if you don't believe that, you're a shill. Okay? So, that's where I believe we should. I think we just got distracted with that for too long. And too many people were just arguing about it. And then their whole life became about arguing the shape of the earth. Forgetting everything else. Okay? So, to my mods here too, I don't want you guys to argue with people about the shape of the earth. And I'm not going to argue with people about the shape of the earth. And um, we'll leave it at that. We will know soon enough. It's just almost like Jesus' name. I know what Jesus' name is, or I think I do, based on what I've read, Yeshua, or Yahushua. But I'm not going to sit and fight with someone and say, oh, that's, no. Or if you don't use the right one, you're in trouble. I don't want to fight with people about that, because do you think Jesus wants us fighting about that? The Bible says, when he returns, we will all know his name. That's when we'll find out. What that statement infers is that there are a lot of people that don't know his real name. They know who he is, but they don't know his real name. Hey, look at that. They're screwing with us. 666 concurrent viewers. Unbelievable. Welcome to YouTube algorithms. Anything they can do. They can't win in the court of ideas, so they'll attach these things to the channel. Look how long it's sitting on 666. So creepy. Wow. So, this is what we're dealing with here. And don't get caught up in paradigms. You can have your personal beliefs about something with your evidence, but the fight and in, in conflict with your fellow man over something, things that don't have a lot of importance is where you get into trouble. You're feeding right into the enemy. In fact, they probably allowed those topics and subjects to proliferate in our consciousness and in our media so that we would be divided over it and we would fight over it. That's something that they would do. This is what they do. This is how they operate. So don't get caught up in it. Look at, again, unbelievable. Well, they're trying to send a message, but they won't win. They will not win. We have the power to tread on serpents. It is written. All right. You guys have any other questions? Welcome to all the new subscribers. Love you guys. And uh, I'll put links to all this in the pinned comment. I don't put the links in the description anymore. Because YouTube algos... They cruise you there too. I guess we should probably talk about all the channels that got taken down. Yeah, look, you guys, I've been saying for the last year how to stay on YouTube. And look, I need to knock on wood or whatever because they could take me down tomorrow. But I'll tell you this YouTube's running a business. If they're not making money on your channel and you have a lot of people watching your channel, they're going to take you down because you're diverting attention away from other channels that do make YouTube money. This is what we're doing on YouTube. People complain about the ads on the videos. Well, that is our, I guess you could say, golden ticket so that we don't get taken down. Now, it sucks that YouTube gets to make money, but I look at it as the price to pay to be on the platform. Just like you have to pay an entry fee to get into Disneyland, right? That's just the price of it. That's just what it costs. It's like using their server. And if you look at it that way, then you shouldn't get so angry about the ads because that's what holds our place here. YouTube considers all that. Here's what happens. And this happened to me. This is why one of my channels went down. Here's what happens. So when you upload a video here on YouTube as a content creator, you either get a green dollar sign next to it or a yellow dollar sign. And if you get too many yellow dollar signs, which means this video is not advertiser friendly. An alg it trips an algorithm. 
if you get too, way too many, like half your videos have a yellow dollar sign, all of a sudden your account gets reviewed by a real person. And then you get some lefty or whoever wants to come on and view and critique your channel and they can easily find whatever they want to pull your channel down. So this is why we have ads on almost all the videos because we don't trip the algorithms. Now YouTube has no excuse to take this channel down. There's no reason to. Everything that you see has been approved by YouTube, amazingly, and it's because I think the people that review it don't really know what we're saying. They don't really know what we're talking about because we use coded language. This is why we have to use coded language. We have to be very wise in how we communicate. Okay, that's all. And I tried to warn my peers, my fellow men on YouTube, that this is where YouTube was headed. If you want to stay on the platform, you got to be careful how you say things. And some of my friends have taken the advice. KJ, for instance, his channel seems to be safe for now because he doesn't tries not to trip the algorithms. This is just the reality of where we're at. I mean, some people would argue, well, why be on the platform at all? Well, if you're one of those people and you don't understand how what it means to be stealthy. I don't know what to tell you. That happens all throughout the Bible where people had to run and hide. Lot was delivered out of the city. Moses had to get on an ark and escape. Lots of instances of people escaping from places or being sly or going under the radar as to not attract attention. So there's biblical precedent for that all throughout the Bible. So... Either we just speak plainly and clearly and say whatever we want and get kicked off the platform and then what good are we going to do anybody? Because we're going to be tucked away on some up and coming platform that nobody knows about and we don't reach it nearly as many people or we're just a little careful how we say things and work within the rules of YouTube and we still get the truth out. And that's where I sit with all of this. Anyway, you guys, I'm going to end the show here. I love each and every one of you. You guys all have a great day.